Hello, welcome to the Home ARP IDIS eTutorials designed for home participating jurisdictions, or PJs. This video will demonstrate how participating jurisdictions, or PJs, should set up, fund, report accomplishments for, and complete Home ARP Supportive Services activities in IDIS. PJs may use Home ARP funds to provide a broad range of supportive services to qualifying individuals or families. Additional details on supportive services and the specific eligible costs can be found in the Home ARP Notice, which is listed in the resources at the end of the video. Now, let's go over supportive services activity setup. A PJ may only set up and fund a Home ARP Supportive Services activity in IDIS once it has met the definition of commitment as defined in the Home ARP Notice. A PJ who will be administering its own Supportive Services activity must set up the activity prior to the beginning of service delivery. If the Supportive Services activity will be administered by a subrecipient or contractor, the PJ may set up the activity upon execution of the written agreement with a subrecipient or contractor. How many activities a PJ sets up will also depend on whether the supportive services will be administered by the PJ or by a subrecipient or contractor. PJs administering their own supportive services should set up a single IDIS activity, even if multiple types of services will be delivered. For supportive services administered by a subrecipient or contractor, a separate activity should be set up in IDIS for each executed written agreement. As an example, if a PJ has decided to administer its own supportive services activity and plans to start delivering services tomorrow, it will set up its activity in IDIS today. To set up this activity, Go to the Plans, Projects, Activities tab at the top of the screen and add a new activity under the left-hand activity menu. Associate the activity with a 2021 Annual Action Plan project, which can be an existing 2021 home project, a single home ARP project for all home ARP activities, or a home ARP project specifically set up by the PJ for only supportive services activities. Remember that if the PJ adds home ARP specific projects to the 2021 Annual Action Plan, it is required to complete an amendment to its plan. Select the Home ARP checkbox and, from the drop down menu, select the activity category Supportive Services. Please note the PJ must select the Home ARP checkbox to ensure that the Home ARP specific activity types, like Supportive Services, are available in the drop down menu. Fill out the Section 3 and Environmental Review fields and select Save. To get to the next Activity Setup screen, select Add Home. Then, enter the written agreement execution date. Since the PJ is administering this activity itself and does not have a written agreement, it should enter the date the activity is set up, today's date, as the written agreement execution date. The PJ must also select the type or types of services that will be delivered, supportive services and or housing counseling. The PJ should ensure it enters the written agreement execution date and service type information accurately because it will not be able to edit the written agreement execution date or unselect a service type once the activity has been funded. The written agreement execution date also determines the quarterly reporting screens that are generated for reporting supportive services accomplishments. Therefore, it is important that the written agreement execution date is correctly recorded in IDIS. To finish setting up the activity, select Save. In our second example, a subrecipient will be administering a supportive services program on behalf of the PJ. The process will follow the same steps we just demonstrated. However, the execution date of the written agreement between the PJ and the subrecipient should be entered as the written agreement execution date in place of today's date. Once the supportive services activity is set up, the PJ may fund the activity. 
The fund type used to fund a home ARP supportive services activity is dependent upon whether the activity is being administered by the PJ or by a subrecipient or contractor. For a supportive services activity that is administered by the PJ, the PJ should not set up any subfunds or subgrants. The PJ must fund the activity with the entitlement or EN fund type. If a subrecipient or contractor is administering the supportive services program on the PJ's behalf, the activity must be funded with the SU fund type. The PJ may not fund a supportive services program that is administered by a subrecipient or contractor with EN funds. To fund a supportive services activity with SU funds, the PJ must first create an SU subfund for its home ARP grant and then create an SU subgrant for that subrecipient or contractor. The PJ should only set up the SU subfund and subgrant in IDIS once a written agreement between the PJ and the subrecipient or contractor has been executed. Additional details on how to set up subfunds and subgrants can be found in the Home ARP IDIS e-tutorial Subfunds and Subgrants on HUD Exchange. To fund a supportive services activity, return to the Edit Activity screen and select the Activity Funding button. For a PJ-administered supportive services activity, locate the Entitlement Funds and select Add Edit. Click I Agree Continue to Add Edit Funding Details to agree with the Home ARP Activity Funding Certification Statement. Enter the total amount of eligible funding and save. When entering the funded amount for a PJ-administered supportive services activity, the PJ should enter the amount of Home ARP funds the PJ will expend for the supportive services activity. For a supportive services activity administered by a subrecipient or contractor, the PJ may fund the activity once the SU subfund and subgrant have been set up. The PJ would follow the same activity funding process as it would for a PJ administered supportive services activity, but instead of selecting the EN fund type, the PJ would locate the SU subgrant it created for that specific subrecipient or contractor and use that funding source to fund the activity. Enter the total amount of eligible funding and save. The amount of home ARP funds entered must match the amount specified in the executed written agreement with the subrecipient or contractor. After eligible expenses have been incurred, the PJ can draw funds for its supportive services activity in IDIS. Remember, once home ARP funds are drawn, they must be expended for an eligible home ARP cost within 15 days. When drawing funds for a supportive services activity that was funded with the EN fund type, the PJ should select its own name from the Voucher Created For drop-down menu on the Create Voucher screen. When creating a drawdown voucher for a subrecipient or contractor-administered activity, the PJ should be careful to select the name of the subrecipient or contractor from the Voucher Created For drop-down menu, not itself. Like all other vouchers in IDIS, this voucher must be approved by another IDIS user. The Home ARP Notice requires the PJ to submit accomplishment data for its supportive services activity on a quarterly basis. First, we'll go over a few key points to keep in mind about quarterly reporting. Then we'll clarify these points with a demo in IDIS. The first key point to keep in mind is that quarters align with the federal fiscal calendar. For example, the first quarter of the 2023 federal fiscal year is October 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. Second, the first quarter the PJ is required to report accomplishments for in IDIS is determined by the written agreement execution date entered on the Activity Setup screen. This is true both for PJ-administered and subrecipient contractor-administered supportive services activities. 
So, if a PJ's written agreement execution date is July 15th, it must start reporting for the July 1st through September 30th quarter. The PJ has no more than 30 days from the end of the quarter to submit its data. Now, let's clarify these points by demonstrating our scenarios in IDIS. In our example, we entered a written agreement execution date of 7-15-2022. To access the Submit Review Quarterly Data screen, search for the activity by selecting the Plans Projects Activities tab at the top of the screen and entering the activity search criteria. On the results page, locate the Supportive Services activity and select Edit. Next, select Edit Home under Setup Detail. Scroll down to locate the Submit Review Quarterly Data button. To add data, click on a quarter and the tab will expand to display the fields that need to be completed. Click on the Add or Edit link at the top right corner of the table to enable editing. The PJ is asked to submit summary data on the total number of households served in that quarter. Since, in our example, the PJ selected that it would be providing both supportive services and housing counseling services, it must report on these categories separately. It must also further break down the number of households served by those experiencing homelessness and those who are not homeless. The PJ will first need to enter the total number of homeless households who received supportive services. In our example, the PJ served 75 such households. Next is new households. A new household is any household who was served this quarter but did not receive services in the previous quarter. For the first quarter of any supportive services activity, all households are new, so this field is automatically populated to match the total households entered. Next, the PJ will need to report on the household's veteran status, ethnicity, race, household size, and household type. If the PJ has not served any households in one or more of these categories, it may enter zero. Once the PJ has completed the required data fields, select Save in the bottom right-hand corner, then confirm Yes, Submit This Report. If the PJ does not submit its data within 30 days of the end of the quarter, it will begin to receive a pop-up reminder upon IDIS login. The PJ can choose to enter quarterly data now, which will take the user to the Review Activities screen. Here, the PJ can review all Home ARP Supportive Services activities that need quarterly reports submitted. The PJ can also see which quarterly reports are currently overdue. Home ARP Supportive Services activities can be completed in IDIS when there are no more eligible costs to pay and the data has been submitted for all quarters since the written agreement execution date. To complete a supportive services activity, data must be submitted for all quarters since the written agreement execution date. The PJ should make every effort to complete the supportive services activity in a timely manner or it will be required to submit data for quarters where supportive services were not provided to qualifying individuals and households. When the activity is ready for completion, select Check Home on the Edit Activity screen. After clicking the Check Home button, if the message shows the home activity pathway is complete, the PJ may proceed to complete the activity. Under Activity Status, select Complete. Enter the activity completion date 
and click Save. For more information on Home ARP Supportive Services activities, see the Home ARP Notice, Home ARP Fact Sheets on HUD.gov, the Home IDIS Training Manual for PJs on HUD Exchange, Home ARP FAQs on HUD.gov, and Home ARP Webinars on HUD.gov. For more help with IDIS, send your questions to the IDIS Ask a Question Help Desk on HUD Exchange. Questions about Home ARP can also be sent to homearp at hud.gov.